Sir, thank you so much. Uh, Lieutenant Governor of Texas Dan Patrick on the phone with us. Thanks for joining us today under the circumstances. I'm sorry for that. Um, what are you getting from police? Are you getting any direct information? Uh, we do have the shooter in custody. Uh, it's a 21 year old male. Uh, and we have between 15 and 20 casualties. We don't know the number of fatalities. And um, I, I just can only thank our law enforcement, El Paso PD, and our Department of Public Safety uh, aircraft. Um, every available asset came in and um, apprehended the shooter as quickly as possible after this uh, terrible day in El Paso. Lieutenant Governor, you know, it's a Saturday afternoon. It looks like a sunny day out there in El Paso. You know, this yeah. happens so frequently these days, unfortunately, that, that people do wonder if it's ever going to happen to them. Talk about this community. Talk about this area. Just give us kind of that overview of, of this area where this happened, if you can, and the community yeah. and the type of people there. Well, El Paso is just a fabulous town, like all of Texas. I mean, Texans are great everywhere. And it's a very close-knit community. It's a heavy military community because of the port, one of our largest bases that close by. Uh, and uh, this is a community that, uh, quite frankly, is one of the safest in the country. Um, you know, we've, we've, uh, I was on with Laura Ingram on one of her shows from there when Donald Trump and uh, Beto O'Rourke were both having rallies there several months ago. And one of the points we made is that El Paso is one of the safest places in the country, one of the safe cities. And so um, you never expect it to happen to you. And uh, obviously our hearts go out to these families. Uh, uh, the shooting victims uh, span the number, you know, a wide range of ages is that we understand at this point, uh, from young to older. And um, they're just out on a normal Saturday, like people are who are watching your show right now or all around the country on a typical Saturday afternoon. You know, in this case, going to Walmart to shop or wherever they are. And uh, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. It's yes. just absolutely heartbreaking. And when I got the call, um, you know, as soon as it happened, you know, my heart just sank again. You know, we, we've had that uh, shooting at Santa Fe Springs, and we had the shooting at, at, at uh, our, our church in the last couple of years, and uh, it's heartbreaking every time. People, it's people hate every hearing time. these stories. We hate covering these stories, and we have to cover them too often. Sir, I want to just go back to some of the information you gave us. You say you have one yeah. person in custody, a 21-year-old male, and you said between 15 and 20 casualties, but you're not certain on the number of fatalities. So it sounds like you have uh, 15 to 20 people shot. You're not sure how many of them have been killed. That's correct. Uh, we don't have that. We don't have that information uh, that we're prepared to release. At what, this time. what else? What else, if anything, can you tell us about the 21-year-old uh, man uh, you have in custody? Have you have you learned uh, anything about a potential motive? At this point, I would direct you to El Paso PD and let them release that information as they uh, decide to. Uh, and I would make them your, your point of contact. Uh, uh, but the 21-year-old is in custody. And, again, uh, law enforcement did an amazing thing. It just did an amazing thing. And as your guest, I just heard a little bit of your previous guest talking about the crime scene. And, you know, when there's one or two people shot, you can imagine the size of this crime scene. And this will be an investigation that will take uh, some time. Um, you know, this, uh, you know, I was, I was, uh, Looking at a story recently, um, I just saw in the last couple of days where Antifa is, is posting, uh, you know, they want to come to El Paso and do a 10-day siege. Um, clear message to Antifa, stay out of El Paso, um, stay out of Texas, basically. But we don't need uh, them coming in on September 1st. We didn't need them to begin with before this happened. But I would, uh, I would say to Antifa, uh, scratch Texas off your map and don't come in. Uh, it is not the time and place for them to come at any time but particularly in the aftermath of what's just happening in El Paso. So Antifa message from the lieutenant governor, stay out of Texas. Uh, lieutenant Governor, we had on a guest earlier, a former special agent in charge of ATF, who said, you know, he sees a real problem. He says the societal damage of mass narcissism and that, you know, you have so many copycats, you have so many people who just don't see a reason to live, and so they think that, you know, they're going to go out in a blaze of glory by doing something like this. It's going to be on social media. Their name is going to be known, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you can take your pick there of which one. Um, how much of a problem is this today, and how do we get a grip on this situation that seems to be increasing? Well, that would be for uh, psychologists and specialists in law enforcement. They would be the experts in this field. I will tell you that after the school shooting in Santa Fe that the Governor Abbott and I participated in three days of roundtable discussions with all of the experts. And uh, we learned a lot from that. And 
uh, th there are profiles to these uh, types of shooters, and, and we'll see once we learn more about this uh, this shooter, this alleged shooter, that uh, we'll find out what profile he fits. Um, but we clearly live in an age where uh, copycat crimes and uh, trying to be a, a, a star on the Internet and bring attention to yourself uh, are, are a lot to do with uh, a lot of what happens today. But I'll withhold judgment until we get more information on the shooter of how he fits the, the profile of these other shooters. But uh, it is a, uh, it's a sad day in Texas, and, uh, but as Texans always do, they stand strong. El Paso will stand strong. Their mayor will stand strong. Law enforcement will stand strong. Their citizens will rally. And uh, in Texas, when we drop to our knees, it's in prayer, um, not because we give up. And we're never going to give up to the shooters, never give up to the lawbreakers. And um, we pray to God and for this family and for those involved in the shooting. Right. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to be on for a moment. That's all I have. Sir, Dan, Dan Patrick, Lieutenant Governor of Texas, thank you so much for your time.